Finally. It's been overdue. I needed to get this started a long, long time ago. So it's about that time. We're going to kick start it today. Most of you that know me, most of my friends anyway, they, they know I like to talk about a lot of subjects, a lot, a lot of subjects. And so my goal with this series is to, over time, really address these topics that all of us discuss amongst ourselves, but maybe not on a bigger stage, maybe not on a place where everybody can really debate and get to the bottom of it. And the reason why I believe that I, this is a good thing to do is because if we are able to do this more often and we put a lot more effort into it, I think we can reach common ground. And common ground is priceless. Um, today, we deal with a lot of different opinions coming from people from different backgrounds and different things like that. And I think communication is key to understanding each other. Because once we understand each other, then maybe, then maybe we can come to an agreement. <coughs> Even on things that we disagree on. For example, we'll start this one today. Relationships, okay? A lot of people, a lot of people have an irrational fear of being alone. And I say that and then people are like, what are you talking about? What does that really mean? Perfect example, how many of you know somebody that's in a relationship just because of the convenience of it? This isn't probably somebody that they're going to marry or that they want to show to their parents or anything like that. It's literally, it's literally a social statement. I have this person, this boyfriend, this girlfriend, this buddy, sorts and this is my statement that I'm normal that I by the way normal there that's a whole nother topic that I fit in that I I have somebody that I can call my own I'm not weird I'm not a loner or an outcast or anything like that the difference there is that I argue with people about the or debate with people anyway about this is even if you're in that relationship with somebody that is is convenient aren't you still alone do you not deal with the same things that you would if you were alone the only benefits that come out of it is now that there's somebody to kind of share your misery and that's that's great and all on the one hand but if it's not the right person you end up adding to that misery you don't end up getting to the bottom of it if that makes any sense. And we can, we can hammer this out and I'll learn how to say it better as the whole point of this, but honestly, I am not a fan of relationships and convenience. If you have elements that make us not very compatible, I'm not gonna try to force them. I don't need to force it. There's no reason to. Perfect example uh, that I read into a little bit that I think is very interesting. There is somewhere around 300, 320 million people in America, the number, the exact number escapes me. Of those that are aged 25 to 44 or whatnot, you have uh, about 300 million or 290 something, somewhere in that range. A large percentage of them, 25 to 44. The reason why I chose that age is that that's, that's when we're, we're trying to settle down. That's when we're trying to get into it. But if you want to include from 16 on up, you're, you're really generating a large swath of the population. But this is applicable no matter what your age is. But I just, just for example's sake, basically what it comes down to is that there's about 150 million men and about 150 million women that could all be, if they were all eligible, okay, and single, you still have only met less than 10% of the population, even if you had met 10 million people and had a good conversation with them. Granted, a lot of people are married, and then how many people are actually single, and all of that stuff. What I'm getting at is, in your lifetime, how many people have you had a conversation with, really, and gotten to know? That number is, according to some of the stuff that I read, is around 10,000. Uh, maybe 20,000 if you're pretty famous and you do a bunch of concerts 
that could get really high. However, you've met just, just a little bit of the available population. So if you're having a problem finding a significant other where you are, don't be afraid of online dating. This is an opportunity for you to reach out beyond your normal circle of people, beyond your certain demographic or geo, uh, geographical area. You can branch out and you can see other people, get to understand other things. And maybe out there there's somebody that thinks like you do. But don't be afraid to search. You know, My motto with a couple of my friends is never set never settle because I watch so many people that settle and they turn around and they cheat and they turn around and they do other things like that because the grass always seems greener when somebody has just that one more attribute that they were looking for just that one more thing that made them laugh that 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 other whatever trait you want to pull out but I personally now don't get me wrong if you think differently than I do and you you don't want to find one person to stay with the rest of your life, then that's fine. You know, you, you can go out and do what you want to do, but for me, what I search for, I want that one person. And I believe that they're out there, not because of naivete and not because of other stuff. No, literally, I haven't really searched, so it's impossible for me to say that they're not out there. And then when I'm ready to search, I will search high and low. I will search up and down. I will search across the country. I will search across the world, really, because we're in an interconnected world. This is the 21st century. I can reach out and talk to people in China if I so desire, or in Korea, or in Russia, or wherever. There's bound to be somebody who shares the same ideals that I have. And I don't even think I have to look that far, but I do believe that I have to be proactive and I have to guard against becoming complacent just because I'm in a rush, because everybody around me, oh, they've got a girlfriend now, he's got a boyfriend now, oh my God, they're getting married, this is going on, that's going on, whatever. Free yourself. You need to be acutely aware of what's going on around you, especially when it comes to relationships and especially when you're trying to decide whether you want to spend a significant portion of your life with this person in exclusion of others. That's a big decision. That's a huge decision. And it, it's crucial in the first minutes and moments and, and m months, really, that you meet somebody, you learn a lot of things about that person. And a lot of red flags that would normally occur to you pop up at that time. If you ignore those red flags, then don't tell me after you've been married for four years that all of a sudden you fell out of love because this person did that and this, the other. No, you knew what you were walking into. Now, a lot of people would disagree with me on that. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll leave that up to debate. And I would love to bring people in and involve them into this discussion so that you can see I'm not pulling this out from some kind of righteous pedestal or something like that. No, watch the people around you. Look at them critically. I love people watching. It's one of my favorite things to do. I can go to the mall and sit down there and just watch the thousands of people that throng by. And I can tell you all kinds of interesting things that I perceive out of people. Are they right? Are they wrong? If I'm not sure, sometimes I'll go up and ask. I'll go up and meet them and find a way to have a good conversation and see whether what I thought was true, maybe it is, maybe it isn't true. And that way I hone my skills to making sure that I understand what that person is about. Am I profiling them or anything like that? You could technically say that, but it's not really negative or positive. It's just, okay, this is what that person is about. That's what that person is about. Let me take it from there. Anyway, that's the beginning of today. Um, I plan to post a bunch, and I would love for you guys to comment, and I will address the comments. I'll occasionally go back into older videos and, and address the comments, and anyway, this is an introduction, so you can get to